welcome back all of you nana here uh, in this record we are going to have a look at uh, the dropship without gop normally we will know sort of the gop but then from the dropship but we can very well uh, perform it without the gop setup also so we are going to do a uh, test on this now so let me go on and share my screen <coughs> we'll have a look at it so but how to set it up uh before that we will now i will not show you but uh, what exactly i am now selling at this time if you go to oracle nano.com slash inbpo that is my website actually oracle nano.com slash inbpo if you go there so here uh, i have recently concluded a training on the fusion inventory and procurement it took uh, more than 3 months for me to uh, complete it actually and then i am covering all the six pillars of uh, procurement also so you can even uh, go on and click on this and then have a look at the agenda the agenda is also pasted on the bottom actually so that that we also can have a look at it so whichever way you feel like you can so i am now presently selling uh, four sales in my website of oracle nano.com slash inbpo the first one is on inb the second one is on procurement this is for all the six pillars actually and then the third is on order management and then uh, finally uh, i have now coupling around 20 module records but in game and the, this is the best uh, uh, one now which i recommend to all of you because you'll be learning a lot on this one. and then if you go above and then see what are all contained in those 20 you can have a look at it you have even the agenda there in the in between if you go and then click on it now fine so you know find these are all the things which are contained and then there is a link for the agenda for these 12 modules so 12 or 9 actually and then you will now get uh, both the records and docs and then uh, the remaining eight are basically bought and sold for which you now only get records but in fact what happens is uh my team my tech my technical team who, who always participates in the training they say that the fusion technical as well as the adf records are really good <clears throat> so similarly we have got something on the financials at cm ppm <clears throat> and then the planning circle of all university also so it's a really a worthwhile investment for you and then it's for education you are spending and so we can now do it now fine so my total records consists of ebs records also and then and so you can even think of for it now fine <clears throat> so i am now attaching you to my group uh, in telegram so you have to ping me at telegram and then i will know you can interact with the participants basically so it will be a really a rich experience for you to interact with my past participants so they may even solve your problems with it fine that is the biggest advantage of this so this is the advertisement actually on the oracle nano.com slash inbp now let us come to the topic present based topic so here let me go there and then go to the product manager and then create the item <coughs> what is the product information management so let me go and then create an item it is for the drop ship test actually click on it so click on create item i will be doing it on the visions master org of 000 so let me choose it one so we have the template available over there now so it's now giving you a warning because somebody is now doing something on the extensible flux fields basically and it doesn't matter come with us subject and then go inside <clears throat> and then once when the template is applied <clears throat> so before you populate your item and then the item description you can go and then see on the right hand side <clears throat> about how the statuses and other things are basically displayed now right? so you have to do that then only what happens will be able to uh, do the things very properly actually here now so it's not taking a lot of time now <clears throat> i am in fact one of the best trainers in the world because my teaching will always have a practical uh, exposure basically when compared to others so learn at me uh, uh buy my records and then and learn so that will be of a great help in that so you can now see the item status is active my life cycle phase design and then user it like fine if these three things are not done fine do not pop in the item and description because otherwise sometimes it gives a problem so i normally use 1t1 fine this time i will now use 1t2 option fine this item which i am going to create now 1t2 i am going to use also so every other attribute is normal not so if you go to the specifications and have a look at it 
and then if you go to the order management tab region, I'm not enabling the back-to-back. -back. So if you go and see on the sales and order management, back-to-back -back is not enabled. So it's a normal item. And then we are going to see a drop ship without a GOP. This is basically, if you make it as yes, it's always for the GOP now. So I go to the associations, then let me associate with the second dot, the 002 dot. I go to the actions, and then go to self -manage. So let me associate with the 002 dot. Associating it to zero zero two. So click on apply and then click on go there. And then this is now getting created now. So this is now assigned to this one. So it's assigned to second off and click on save and close. So the item one T2 dropship is now created. So for that. So we need not have to have any stop at all. So we will now go directly and then collect the plan actually. Now go there. You go to the plan, supply chain planning. So go to the supply chain planning. And then you go to the plan inputs and that does not perform a collection. So click on it, go there. And then go to collect planning data. So drop it down and then make it as OPS. And then here, I'm make it as a target. So I'm now going to collect only item now, but nothing else because it's the only one which I created. Remember, the item has to come into the planning area. So that's why we have to connect it. And then connect it on a targeted fashion. So go there, click on submit. So we are submitting it. So the 464 concurrent is now running. You can even go on the how and put it and go to space. Go to the tools. And have a look at the scheduled process. 464 will be running. So 464 is now running. So it will not take around a possible 10 minutes time. So what I will do is I will now pass the record and then I will now come back again, and then I will now, once when it is completed, the collection process is completed, we'll again start. Let me pause the record for some time. The worker to delete stage data is the last concurrent of it, so it has got completed. So we'll now go ahead on this one. So once when it is completed, that means what the item is collected. So what you can do is, I will now right click and then duplicate, and I will now see whether my item is available here or not in the plan inputs. Go to the plan inputs and then have a look at it. <clears throat> you go to the supply chain planning. Supply chain planning. Supply chain planning. And I go to the plan inputs and then let me query my item. My item is starting on one T two. So whether it is collected or not, then we can check out one T two. Click on search and I'll find my dropship item has to come here. One bit cheap, we got it. So it is now collected. So it is available on the 002 R. Now, what I do is I will now go on and perform a refresh and start on this one. I click on the schedule new process. And then they are planning to remove this refresh and start. My refresh and start is basically going to bring it to the online memory of the planning engine actually. So let me perform the refresh and start for this one. Then click on OK. Then I normally use to enable every parameter on this one. So go there. And then I put it on everything. So UM is also selected. So I click on submit. I'm not doing it. So wait for the concurrent to complete. So the refresh will be running now. <clears throat> so refresh and start is now running. So let us now wait for the concurrent to complete. So let me wait for some minutes. I'm going to pass the record. Okay. Uh, now we have submitted this concurrent. Fine. Uh, but then it got completed by now. <clears throat> So there are so many other things are running fine. Well, the main concurrent, uh, which is for the global order promising, fine. Uh, that has to uh, uh, 
there is a refresh and start this one. Right? So this has got succeeded. Now let us go there and then create a sales order. We will now go and then create a sales order for this one. Now go there. <clears throat> we will now go to the order management. So I have already uh, that available on my favorites actually. I click on the favorites and then I will now go to the manage orders. Let me create an order for this item actually. This time I'm now going to use what? The dropship route it can create order. So drop it down and then go there. So the US one will be right. And then I will now put one of my customers over here now. So I have a customer over here. So let me put the customer over here. <coughs> and then I will now go there, put the item now. Fine. One T2. I got only one item that will be coming up automatically over here now. So I'll now go for 10 quantities on this. So it's a normal item, it's not a it's not a back-to-back -back item. 10 quantities I need, I click on add. So on the supply area, I go there, click on it. I go to the supply area. So in the supply area, so what I'm going to do is I'll now go there. Instead of the warehouse, I will now put the supplier at it is ABC consulting. So let me put the ABC consulting and then let me put the appropriate one, drop it down. I will not choose the ABC US one. So this makes the uh, sales order as a drop ship. So the supplier is going to supply it. But it will be failing it. So click on submit now. I will not submit the sales order. I will not go there. Right. So let me keep the order number over here now. <clears throat> this will not progress at all. It will be having a problem. So three lakh one two three four eight. Three lakh eight is a sales order number. So it is basically a drop ship sales order. So it's a drop ship okay. And then I will now go to actions and then go to switch to fulfillment view. Here you will now see that it will be showing a problem. So I'm not click on the fresh one. It will not show a problem. There will be a red X which will be coming up on this one. Go to the fulfillment now. Click on the fulfillment. I will now go further and then click on the do number. Click on the do number. So we are going to schedule. So scheduling will not be a problem, but uh, it has to change to procure now, right? After that scheduling, it has to change to procure now. We click on refresh. It will be changing to procure because we are now given the supply details here. And we now want to change to procure, but it will not go to procurement at all. Not go to the procurement at all, it will be getting stuck on this. So, scheduling is completed. So, procurement is now started. So, it will not throw an error mainly because the item has to be available on the dropship or if the item is not available on the dropship or it will be failing. The workflow will fail, the do will fail. So, you can now see a red X has come out. So, click on the X now, it will not show some random errors. Because the technical team has now taken up errors from here and there. So they were unable to understand what to populate. So item is not valid. You must enter a description. You must enter the category. UAM is not valid. So all these nonsense they have figured out because they, they were not given a proper guideline upon what to do now. So this is not the real error actually. Right? So the great purchase requisition has failed because of this. The real error is what the item is not on the dropship bar. I will not show you where exactly you know. So we'll now go to this place, click on it. So go to the setup and maintenance. And then we will now assign the item to the dropship. Click on it. You go to what? Go to search now. This manage dropship inflow. So go to the stars now, find manage dropship financial flows, find on it. Manage dropship financial flows the one. You're going in there. <coughs> So here, I will now make a search that will be done. So plenty of things have been made now. So this is uh, by done by, uh, if you click on it, so somebody has done for their uh, business unit actually. So the business unit is what the receiving organization, the selling legal entity is what one ham US legal entity. So I am now working on vision and so this is not applicable at all. 
So the third one is ours. This is the one which is of the vision's one. We go there and then see. So the vision has been given on zero zero one org. I know that for every org there is one org which is a dropship org. Right? This is the US one doesn't need it, and then US one doesn't need it. So the dropship org is Seattle, which is nothing but zero zero one. So the orders, and then the receiving is also same. And if you're going to do a cross BU, fine. If you do it, then what happens? You have to set up the uh, uh, what's called the dropship financial orchestration options also. And dropship financial options also has to be set. And then there are so many other things to be set. If it is going to be across BU, so since it is the same BU, and then uh, every BU can have only one org. I cannot add one more org also for the same BU combination. BU LE combination, we cannot have one more R. So we have to have only one R. We can have at the maximum only one R. So if an item has to be drop shipped to a supplier, it has to be available on this drop ship R. That was the problem. So let's go there and then correct the problem. Let's go there. Click on the <coughs> I will now go to the home page. I will now go to the product management. I'm going to go to the product management. I'm going to go to the product information management. And then let me query the one T2 item dropship item. And then let us now assign it to the Seattle log, which is 001. I'm going to the browse items and then let me browse the item over there. So that is called a dropship or one T2. And remember, we are working on a non GOP now. So the top one is basically the 000 R. So let me open up and then let me assign it to the child also. So here I go there. I will now go to what? Uh, associations and then let me associate with the child. What actions? I'm going to select an action. Go there. It is not done now. So go there, click on it. Save and close. Now I will now create a new sales order. Now it has been assigned to 001 also. Atlanta is the second organization. We'll now go and then create a new sales order. Click on that. This time it will not have any problem at all. The procurement will now go smoothly actually. So let us now create a new order. Since the item is assigned. Fine. So here we are not going to ship it from the dropship org. It is only for your internal uh, logical org actually. So it has to be available on the logical org. Click on it. I will now put the item one T two and what happened. So I will now go for twenty quantities this time. With that, let me click on add. Now, again, I will now go to the second line and then put the supply as a supplier. Make the, supplier. the ABC consulting is the one. Consulting. And then I will now put the appropriate one. So I'm going to say ABC US one. That's it. Let us now submit the sales order. This will now go smoothly. So actually, we are not going to ship anything from uh, 001 or 002. Fine. So it has to be available on the dropship or 3009 is the one. Change it to 3009. So go to the actions, and then you are now switched to fulfillment. This time it will not be properly done. Go for that. So click on the hyperlink of it. So schedule reserve will now change to procure. Once when we schedule it. So, since the supplier is present on the main one, fine, it will automatically get changed to procure. And then that will be getting created. So, it will now say the status will be after schedule, it will be requisition created, will be the one which will be coming out. And then for the contact, I have already created one, uh, it's called a user now. I know that one. I will now log in with the user and the other browser actually. I'll take copy. I will now open up my Opera browser <coughs> in which I will now log in with the supplier's contact. So it is a John about. 
A W O W T. So I have now created already a user for the supplier actually, and then I have this is the password. So we are now logging in with the supplier actually. So once when the purchase order is created, he will be getting a message over here now. So we'll now go there, go to this place, and then we'll now refresh it. It is now set. Or else it is now scheduled and go there. So the next activity is completed. Right here, it will be getting a requisition actually. And remember, this will not be getting uh, what happens. Uh, it will not be getting uh, it's called interfaced into uh, the supply chain orchestration at all. Supply chain orchestration is mainly for what? It is mainly only for uh, uh, your uh, uh, drop ship, buy, make, and transfer. Now again, it is not throwing another because we need to collect it also since it has been assigned to second or first or it has to be collected. So what I will do is as a what's called if you go there and click on it. So it is not showing all these errors actually. So purchase requisition, fine go that uh, for master items, either into the item list price. Something, something they have given. Right? So I have to collect it. Then only what happens? It will be able to sense that it is assigned to the lot. So what I do is I will now go there, go to this place. I will now make a change of this now. Right? Let me change it. Right? The dropship financial flows, let me change it. That need not have to be collected, but items assigned to the R need to be collected actually. So what I do is I'll now go to the manage dropship. Inflows. So let me go to the task and then let me correct it. Here I can. This need not have to be collected actually. Well, that's fine. I will now open it up now. So let me go and then edit it. Select it and then click on edit now. I'm going to edit. Click on this now. I'm going to edit this now. So go down. Ah, it is not the one. Ah, it is not the one. So I will now close it now. Fine. Not the way to do it. Now click on the hyperlink of it and then try to correct it. So go there. So here I will now select it and then click on edit. This line I'm going to edit. So let me change the organization to what Atlanta. So item is already assigned on the kind of that point. A T L A N and I'm going to add now. It is Atlanta. I'm not going to make it Atlanta. Atlanta is zero zero two now. We are not complaining about that. So it is already active. Fine. Now this time it not be, it need not have to be collected. But if you change the org, it need to be collected actually. So we are not changed it now. Point. I change it Atlanta zero zero. Now this time the sales order has to go through smoothly actually. So I'll go back and then click on done now and come back and then again do it now. Just for simulation, we are doing all these things, but it has to be very perfect in the beginning. You have only one org as a what's called your dropship or and then you have to do it. So go there, drop it down. And remember, it will not follow through your uh, uh, what's called supply chain orchestration actually. <clears throat> Supply chain orchestration is only for make, buy, and transfer and not for dropship actually. It's a 1T2. And then you have. I will now go over 30 quantities now. You would have. And then let me add it now. Click on it. I will now provide the supply over here. Click on the supply. So go to the supply. <clears throat> So here, supplier is ABC Consulting. Here, I'll drop down into the ABC US one. Let me submit this. <clears throat> so three thousand ten is now submitted. Let me correct it again. So it is three thousand ten now. So go to actions and then go to switch to fulfillment view now. And then go down. And then we'll have a look at the do number. So after scheduling, it will now get changed into what uh, procurement now. Scheduling is not So it will now get changed to that. And then it will be creating a requisition. It will not schedule. And then go for the now. Now you can now see requisition create will be coming because now it is available on the dropship org of Atlanta. So now we have made the dropship org itself as Atlanta. So it will now pass through. It will not have any problem. So procurement has started now. So the procurement has started. It will now say requisition created. So we'll wait for some time till the workflow does the job now. 
oh god again it is now giving a problem now oh god something else is a problem uh probably i might have missed the what's called the list price on the item actually and that may be the reason because i'm now saying that rather no one so it is now saying list price i have not seen it properly so a uh, list price is not defined at all is a must actually fine but is a mistake actually. so i made another mistake actually so you know i not seen it properly last time itself it gave the error actually i have not seen it properly so list price is a must whenever you are making a drop ship now amount given as price that are go to the product management and then you go and then correct it and go to the product information management so let us now correct the error actually buddha ho gaya for getting things <laughs> go there so click on it and go to the browse items so item is 1 t2 now open up the master org itself now in the top i need to have this price the specifications <coughs> go down and then you go to the purchasing and then you have to have a list price normally what happens everybody has to have one list price on this not on the reference say 10 dollars so i'm not giving a list price i will not give a seven close i'm not sure about whether the master controlled attribute or org controlled attribute so let me go to the child org and then make a check now thank you on search again so now go to the second line and then have a look at it the list price is number Now update the number. So I'm in the zero zero one or what are the specifications? So go there. Click on the purchasing. So go there. So purchasing. Oh God, it is a org controlled attribute. So we have to give it every time. So ten is the one. And then give us even close now. Right now zero zero one is no more our uh, uh, dropship org now. So click on such. And then you have to make it as Atlanta. In Atlanta also we have it. So Atlanta is now. So this is the one. Actually zero zero two. It will not become a plant town, so we will not go there and then do the price also. So go to the specifications, <coughs> go there. What is the purchasing? And then give us price. So since it is an org control attribute, fine. We are having different price, but it should not be because people are making an experiment on this. But once when you update an attribute, it need not be collected. Item attributes whenever I update it, it need not be collected. But assignments may need a collection. I am not very sure about it. Because I thought that the error came, and so they are not doing it now. And anyhow, I change my uh, dropship org also. Now this time, let us now go and then get our org. It should not stop anywhere at all. Drop it down. Yeah. So one thing. Now there were twenty five quantities on this. So go to the supplies. Then go there. So it's a EABC consulting. So I'm going to drop down and then choose the site. The EABC as well. Go there. Consult it. <clears throat> Now we are on the third attempt actually. Gajani Muhammad fought for seventeen times and then he he yeah, succeeded actually. Now we have only done three times. We are better than him. <laughs> Don't tell this explanation to anybody. So click on the orchestration number. So let us now refresh. Item attributes are need not be correct actually. That will be getting immediate error from the sales. So they are now have to bring everything like this now. Fine, that is the biggest problem. So they need collections and refresh. Now refresh they are going to bypass very soon actually. So we are all the procurement has started, not started, it will not start. So once it is started, you can now see the requisition created message will be coming. It will be coming as what requisition created.
yes, we got the message that the requisition is now created actually. So we go down and then go to the fulfillment line. We go to the fulfillment lines of this one, the orchestration process. We go down, go down. So normally you will be having uh, what's called uh, uh, in this area, the supply order number will be coming. But since there is a drop ship, the supply order number will never come at all. And then this is a requisition number that is got created. So we will now convert this into a purchase order actually. The requisition number is now having the supply details also. Find that point. So it is orders go that point. And then if you go on and see on the orchestration plan, <clears throat> and I click on refresh now, you can now see that the procurement requisition is created. Now let us now go on and convert this into a purchase order. I know that point. Long you have done now. <clears throat> Along with the home icon, and then I go to the procurement now. And go to this place, and then go to the procurement now. And then go to the purchase requisitions, and then not purchase requisition actually. I have to go to the purchase orders. And I made a mistake. I have to go to the purchase orders. And then I go to the process the requisition. So I will now go to what again, go to the home icon. And then I want to go to the purchase orders now. So go to the procurement and then go to the purchase orders over here. I go to the purchase orders. So in the purchase orders, I go there, click on it. I will now go to the process requisition. Find the top and go to go to the process requisition. And then let me query my requisition number one. You're going to process it. You go to the process requisition at the top. So let me query the requisition now. Requisition number is there. Then remove the buyer because the buyer may not be available on the wrong bank account search. So query for it. So you'll now find that this is now getting reserved actually. This 25 account is reserved. And if you click on the IA icon and it will show you that this is the requested goods are to be shipped to a third party. So the supplier will be supplying it to uh, the customer directly. Well, now select the line and then you go to the order, add to document builder. I'm going to add it now. So let's go there and then we'll now add it. So here, uh, since uh, we don't have any what's called any agreement available here, now, I click on simply accept. Click on it. Okay. Go down and then now create the what's called the purchase order. <clears throat> so we are going to get the purchase order, and then I have already set the approval as automatic. I hope that uh, nobody has disturbed it, and then let me submit for approval also directly. And normally, since uh, this org is going to be Atlanta. Or Seattle, I think it will be Seattle. I think it will be Seattle. It is a dropship or so we are not going to receive anything on the dropship or the customer is going to receive it. So you can now see the customer's address is now populated on the purchase order so that the supplier who is going to be our uh, what's called the main manufacturer who is going to supply to the customers will be understanding that it has to be supplied. Go down. You can now see the default ship location is blank. It's now blank. And then if you go to the line number, you can now see uh, this is not coming over here. Now, fine. So all these things are coming fine. Is again the location is what is the customer's location and not our location actually. Fine. If you click on the icon, it is for the third party location actually. So it is the third party location. Go near it, it will not show you. Fine. Go near it, it will not show you. So this is a third party location, it is not our location. So supplier has to supply to this location and not to our location of Atlanta. So, go there. so the long go there, click on it. But the org will be Atlanta, I think. The org will be Seattle, I think. Because there is a dropship or go there. Is there any other place the org is coming, not coming? We can even add a, add a what's called in the view, we can add it in how look. So go there. Let me submit it up. Before submitting it, you know, take copy. This is a page P1 number. So click on submit. And then once when it is approved, that will be getting updated on the sales order also. <clears throat> The supplier will now supply the material to the customers directly. And then afterwards, you will now create a ASN, advanced shipment notice or advanced shipment compelling notice. So one of them you will now create. So based upon which the sales order gets updated automatically. So the sales order will be getting updated automatically. So we'll now go to the manage orders and then how to put it under the manage orders. And then let me query the order number. Give a search. It's now printing approval now and we have to wait for one time. So, so let's again go on the search for it. It has to become open. So once when it is open, it will be communicated to the, <coughs> the supplier also. 
it's on the bidding approval, it will show you how much it has progressed on this now, on the workflow. <coughs> so the supplier will be able to query this now. On the supply portal, you can very well see this. That it is approved. <coughs> so in this place, whatever we go there. So he will now click on the supplier portal. Now it is now supplier's login actually. And click on the supplier portal. <coughs> he has to create an ASN. He will now create either ASN or ASBN actually. Advanced shipment come billing notice. If he creates the invoice, will be created and then will be sent to your uh, this thing also. It will be sent to what your uh, 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 payables also. And they'll all be there. So click on the one in this place. If you go on that, I will play again. Search. We had to wait for this to get opened actually. So click on printing up the I hope that uh, nobody has uh, modified it now. Otherwise, we have to set up the approval also to automatic. So you can now see application developer has completed the stock, the task has got completed. So everything has now got completed. So I think on done fine. You will now see that it will be open. So application developer is the person who is now creating this purchase order. So once that is done, you can now see the updations coming up on it. Now this will be getting updated onto your uh, what's called in the supply portal also. It takes some time to get updated. It will be approved actually. So we'll now go there. In this place, let us now create on the supply portal, we'll now create a ASM first. He will be, it will be communicated automatically to him. So I will now paste the purchase order number over here now. So in the purchase order number, the supplier portal is you now going to make a search for it. And it is for 25 quantities. So we got it. So he is now going to create a ASM and select it and click on create ASM. And click on create ASM. So this is for 20 quantities. But now he has manufactured it or he is now having only 20 quantities to ship actually. So here we will now put our uh, this thing now, fine. Our ASM number. I will now say ASM underscore one. The is a number which the supplier is creating it, and you will now fill up the remaining details. So, you know, so out of 25, he is able to ship only 20 now. And then go there. And then he will now go and then click on submit. Before submitting it, if you go there and then have a look at our sales order. So, if you go there, it is now requisition created. Now, purchase order is also created. And then if you refresh it, it will now go to awaiting shipping actually. Click on refresh now. It will not go to PO created. But long go there, should be awaiting it. And then if you go to the full front lines and then have a look at it, you will now see the P1 number also coming up. Initially, whatever the requisition number came in, now the P1 number is also. Up. Now, once when you ship it, now fine, once when you get an ASN, the line will be getting split into two now. So he is now going to submit it. Now only for 20 quantities. So click on submit now. So there is no need to have any physical receipt of this material in our thing because there is a logical receipt and then ASN itself is sufficient. Once the supply is ASN and all. If you are not having a supply portal license, then we have to make a physical logical receipt. That is the master key. So we are not given 20 of them. So click on that. <clears throat> so if you expand it, if you select the click on create ASN, then it tries to show me the remaining file. So uh, I think I have done everything now, and I'm not sure about dollar quantity, receipt quantity. It's not showing me anything at all. I know I don't know what I have done actually, whether I given 20 or not. I'm not exactly wondering a lot. So let us go there and then have a look at it. So click on refresh now. I'm refreshing it. So it is now saying ship 20 is now shipped like exactly. It has now got split actually. So it is now 20. So if you click on done now, find the line would have got split into two. So go there. You can now see the 20 has been shipped actually. The remaining five will be awaiting billing, awaiting shipping actually. And then it is now shipped. And then if you refresh it, it will now go into what awaiting billing actually. So that will now for whatever has been shipped it becomes ready for this now. So it is now shipped. And then if you go to the header line also, you now see one line will be basically ready for shipping now before awaiting billing actually. So it will push and that will be going over there. And then it will be pushed into the interface tables of AR. And then from there, you can very well create an invoice and then uh, by importing the order invoice and then uh, process the payment for the supplier. So as and when the supplier keeps on shipping it, the line will be getting split further, further and further. So if he says, let us say, he is now going to ship only uh, three more, then the sales order will be, line will be getting split into three lines. 
So this completes uh, what a dropship without a GOB. And then remember the item has to be assigned to that dropship R. There is only a logical R. So every item, whatever you want to dropship, the <coughs> dropship financial flows observe the R, and then that has to be assigned to that place now. So that we have to work upon. And then you can contact me at uh, uh, 9841867924. 9841867924, all otherwise. nana.apps60, naana.apps60, at the rate gmail.com, one of the methods. And then you can also watch my promotional videos published in YouTube, Ananta Nana. <clears throat> and you go on and make a search. There are plenty of uh, promotional videos there. Fine. I'm one of the best trainers on the supply chain, actually. Fine. My coverage will be very in depth. And then you will definitely become implementation ready by the time you complete everything. So I'm now having a sales at uh, oraclenano.com slash INBPO. So there are four sales that are available here. So whichever is of interest to you, you can buy and then you can, you can even support me in my uh, normal work. Now. So I'm, I would like to thank you for your support. So bye for now. And then we'll not try to what happens, see in another video. Now.